Hey, have you missed me? It's only been a month and a half. Uh, <laughs> I've done a terrible job of keeping up with my weekly vlogs, and for that, I apologize, sort of. Um, as you can see, well, I guess first, I'm Samus. I'm a producer, rapper, PhD student um, based out of Ithaca, New York. I'm not in Ithaca right now. I'm in sunny Austin for OzCon, an open source um, conference. And um, I'll, I'll get into what I'm doing here and the experience so far in just a moment. But I have so much to talk about and I'm gonna try to condense this as best as possible. Um, and actually part of the reason why I'm recording this now is that my set at OzCom was so dope it made me realize um, like I have to be documenting this stuff otherwise I'm gonna end up with one like two hour video of all the cool stuff that's happened like it was just too cool for me to continue to put off another week of not sharing the awesomeness um, so let me go back a little bit. The last time I recorded a vlog was I think April 2nd or 3rd. I had just performed a show in Philly um, for the rap artist Ivy Soul. Um, so since that time, Jesus, what has happened? <laughs> oh my God, so much stuff has happened. Ugh. Um, show wise. So like midway through, let me check my little like tour. Um, yeah, okay. So I kind of chilled a little bit after that show, went home, you know, I was teeing this class, grading papers and stuff, which don't even I don't even want to get into what has happened with the class that I'm teeing for. Just suffice it to say that it's been a lot more work than any of us anticipated it being. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so I kind of had like an Ithaca College weekend. Um, like, uh... Midway through April, I was booked at IC like three nights in a row or three days in a row, which was just absolute craziness. Um, so shout out to Ithaca College for showing me love, man. Um, so the first night I did a set with Open Mike Eagle, which is so exciting for those of you that don't know. He's like one of my favorite rappers of all time. Um, he, I met him in 2012, right after I dropped my first album. He was on tour with my mentor, one of my mentors, Mega Ran. And uh, yeah, kicked it up, kicked it off, um, hit it off. I don't, whatever the term is. Um, <laughs> something was off, um, <laughs> except it wasn't off because it was on because it was a dope interaction. Okay, anyways. Um, so yeah, he's just super cool, makes really good music, and is like a genuine good person. Um, so it was really good to see him, and it was good to, like, he saw, he, I think, can really speak to the evolution of my set, because he saw me when I was first, first starting to rap in Ithaca, and then kind of where things have come, and he remarked about how he appreciated all the emotion and excitement and yada 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 that's um was a part of the show that I think hadn't been part of my previous at least definitely not in 2012 I wasn't doing anything on the level that I've, I'm doing it now so that was tight yay um then the next day I was hosting a beat battle I invited Susie Analog who she's like a tight experimental kind of R&B like trip hop every cool thing ever producer and singer and just creator um I love her so much she's so cool she has big glasses too we have big glasses big glasses producer ladies um and uh, yeah, and I also invited my homie Mega Ran um, to, they were judges for the beat battle. So it was really cool, except that I had agreed to be at a different place. So I was hosting it and then halfway through I left the beat battle and left the person, the person in charge was um, the president of CU Cyphers, um, this dude named Sarong. So I appreciate him. Thank you for taking up the helm. I'm using these phrases and I don't think that they're, I'm using them right for, you know, doing that <laughs> so anyways um 
what happened? Yeah, so I was kind of bummed to miss the beat battle, but I, it was because I was invited to perform at Ithaca College has an event or a, a kind of week-long program called Africa Week, um, which celebrates different people from across the diaspora and um, through you know pro educational programs, panel discussions, I think film screenings, and this was the culminating night. It was a banquet, so I performed there. It, it was really nice. It was at the Ithaca Hotel, so it was downtown. Everybody looked really nice. I, of course, did not look nice because I was coming from the beat battle. <laughs> Um, it's all good. And then the next day I was, um, oh, and there was an artist who performed before me. I don't have his name, but I'll put it in the, in the, um, like information section. Um, and he was so good. He's this Nigerian dude who was singing these kind of like, I don't know. It made, they made me want to dance. They were nice jams. very melodic, like really, really got stuck in my head. Um, but yeah, I'll get his name. He was, he was really, really good. I was into it. Um, so, uh, yeah, cause for those of you that don't know, I'm, I'm Congolese and Ivory and my mom is from the Ivory Coast. My dad is from the Congo. And, um, as I've spoken about with the EP that I just dropped, the song Backstabbers is really the first in time that I've ever really engaged with my Africanness. Um, so sometimes people are surprised because they, they don't know my, my real name is Anango Lumumba Kasango, but you know, um, they're like, oh, I didn't realize that you were like African, African, African. <laughs> I am. So anyways, um, so yeah, all that happened. Then Sunday, I was invited to perform at Ithaca, or not perform, but give like a, a talk at Ithacon, um, which is um, like a comic convention that's been going on for, for I think like 50 years or something like that. Um, a comic book convention that's been going on for, for all of that time. This is not a good video, I apologize. Um, but when I got there, because of like publicity things, it was like me, my boo, and like four other people. <laughs> so the person running it was like, oh, I'm so sorry, let's like reschedule this for something else and when we can have the time to properly promote it and do, do what it do. Um, and so I will now be helping to put together an event um, called From Ripley to Pippi, or From Pippi to Ripley, sorry. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll have more details about that, but it's not for a little while, so you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, it, I mean, no sweat off my back. Then the craziest thing ever happened. So after that, me and Boo were like, okay, let's go get um, brunch or whatever. So we go to this restaurant called North Star. We're like chilling. And then I get a phone call and it's like, it goes to voicemail and I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, we're having, we're enjoying each other. Like no needs for me to be on my phone. Then I'm like, wait, no, this is a 607 number, which is the area code for Ithaca. Like I feel like I should answer this. So I call back the number and it's a dude from programming at Cornell. And he's like, hi, and I'll go. And I, I'd known him through, we're in a, a um, like an honor society together. So I'm like, hey, hey, Joe, what's up? And he's like, hi, um, what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, oh, you know, nothing much, just work, grading, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, well, we're bringing up an artist named Young Thug. I don't know, would you like to open for him? And I just like, I could not contain myself. I was like, what? Absolutely, I would like to open for him. That's ridiculous. Like, that's, that's just the craziest opportunity ever, like, um, I just, it's, I was like this, I couldn't put words together. Um, so yeah, uh, he's like, okay, cool. We, t you know, discuss like money and, and like when I'm going to show up or whatever, blah, 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 hang up the phone and that's it. So then like me and Bay, like we just, we're just losing it. Just laughing for the rest of the afternoon, like preparing. Cause this is insanity. <laughs> like opening for young thug. I just feel like you know, A, the type of music we do is so, like, separate, so distinct from each other, um, that it's, like, funny that I would be an opener, um, but also, like, he's huge, he's huge, you know, like, this is a, something that people who are, are much further along in the game than I am probably should be doing, and this opportunity sort of fell in my lap through my relationships and being at Cornell, so I'm, I was just grateful and found it to be hilarious. Um, so then I'm like, hey, bae, do you want to be my DJ? And he's like, yeah, sure. So now he's not even like a, like a DJ DJ. And now and he can, in his credits, he could be like, oh yeah, I opened for Young Thug. Like, that's just so funny. So anyways, um, so then I, you know, we went to sound check. Um, and then I went home, changed, you know, we put the set list together and everything and then went, um, 
went back to uh, Barton Hall, which is like this big, like um, used to be an airplane hangar. Now it's like a, a gymnasium. There's a, like a track around it and they had sectioned it off and had the stage and everything. It was huge. Um, and man, when I tell you the energy in there was like off, <laughs> like people were so wasted and just in like a dark place. I've never in my life have performed in front of an audience like that. Like I felt like we were being offered up, like or we were joking about feeling like it was like a, an offering from fucking Roman times. <laughs> like you could hear the crowd like, like rattling the cages and just, oh my God. I was like, are you, you are not even acting like human beings right now. Like calm down. You're about to hear a mediocre rapper slur his way through like some songs that you really like. Calm down. And, um, well, I didn't even say the reason why I was tapped to be the opener was because the original opener, I guess, missed her flight. <laughs> so, you know, too bad. So sad. So anyways, so, you know, I get on stage, I do my thing. That's probably one of the bigger, maybe the biggest audience I've ever performed in front of. It was like, I would say two, 3,000 people, 2,000, 3,000 people. Um, and they were like, not giving me that much love, <laughs> which is irritating for a number of reasons. A, because I'm an incredible rapper. I mean, I just... I feel like I'm a really dope rapper. I put, I give 1 million percent. So I feel confident saying that, um, uh, because I'm in love with it and, um, and I practice really, really hard. So yeah, I, I feel like it's okay for me to say that. Um, but like also because I'm like a Cornell PhD student, like I'm, one of y'all motherfuckers, you know what I mean? I just was so over it. Like, and the weekend prior, Ithaca College had shown me so much love. So I was like, man, I'm here rapping my ass off. And they're just like, oh, okay, when's Young Thug coming? So I was just like, okay, F you with that noise. I'm gonna walk off with my paycheck and <laughs> peace. And then after the fact, people would come up to me, yo, I really liked your set. Yo, you were, that was so tight. Like, man, tell that to the rest of your fucking like colleagues and friends. Um, so obviously I'm salty about that. I mean, I don't know what I, what I could expect at a Young Thug show, but I like know that I busted my ass and wrapped my ass off and tried to infuse some of my messaging. It's also really hard to talk about like the importance of like feminism in my life and, um, you know, like being true, authentic to your identity in front of an audience that's fucking wasted and like, like violently charged to see this per one performer. Um, so that was like one of the most intense shows I've ever had in my life. Um, but Hey, like it, it was an informative experience. And I think it's something that I've talked about in the past where I have this anxiety with, with blowing up or with getting more and more, um, you know, fame or, or claim because when you move from like, you know, smaller venues to main stages, like things change in terms of access and like your ability to look at every single person in that room. And that's a lot of what my show relies on is that kind of like personal connection. I mean, Love Song, the song that I finished my set with, I get out in the audience. I couldn't get out in the audience. You know, I, I touch people, I say people's hands, I give people hugs. I'm like right in your life. Um, so, I mean, I think it was a good experience because it forced me to reckon with what I need to do in order to engage an audience of that size and from that distance. Um, and so I've really been thinking a lot about th different things that I can incorporate into my show to still create that kind of like love and community feel, but with like 3,000 people, <laughs> um, 3,000 people who want to see a completely different kind of rap than I'm offering. Uh, so that was that. That was like the craziest weekend of my life. And um, Bay was awesome in terms of just like, because I was after the show, I was like, man, I feel like I didn't get the love that I should have had out, as I was like, you know, about to have an aneurysm rapping so hard. Um, and he was just like, you know, well, what's dope about this weekend is just the versatility of things that have transpired. It's like, you know, Friday, Open Mike Eagle, Saturday, hosting a beat battle and, and performing at Af Africa Week the next day, going to this comic book convention, and then that night opening for Young Thug. Like, that's journey itself is a beautiful thing, to be able to be an artist that can be an 
in all of those arenas. So I was grateful to hear that word and it, it really touched me. So thanks, Faye. <laughs> um, so what happened next? Um, Sorry, there's so much to pack in here. The next kind of big thing that happened was PAX East. Ah! Oh my God. So that was April, the weekend of April 22nd. All of that other stuff happened the weekend prior, like April 15th, 16th. Um, so PAX East, holy shit. So they, f um, I, I flew with um, Bay and then my um, manager also met, us up, met up with us in Boston. Um, and like... Man, this is one of those times when I really feel like I maybe need to be in absentia in terms of my PhD and come back a little bit later. Just because I, because of the class that I'm TAing, I wasn't able to go to Boston on Friday until fr like late Friday night uh, because I had class as a section on Friday. And like I was on the main stage of PAX. That means like maximum visibility. That means that when you walk into PAX, there's like an area that's called Bandland, and it's like directly to the left of like the, the entrance. So like all of the foot traffic, all of the people that I could have kikied it up with and chatted with and like, you know, helped to bring on board to possibly see my show or buy some merch. I like completely missed that on Friday because of doing my school stuff. So I was, I was salty and feeling like at some point something has got to give, um, because that's a huge opportunity. And I am annoyed that I was not able to like, because I had already missed section two other times for other music obligations. So I didn't feel comfortable doing it again and having to ask one of the other TAs to step in for me, but I felt tight. I felt like Man, like, and then I go back to class and these students don't even know what I'm doing out here. Like, anyways, that's a whole different other thing. So, um, yeah, so I got in late Friday night. We got at the hotel. Um, I think we watched some bad Law & Order shit and then went to sleep. I don't remember. Then the next day I had sound check. I sat in Bandland the whole time and Kiki did up. The double clicks were there. Paul and Storm, um, that was my first time meeting them. Uh, MC Front A Lot was there. He's super fun and cool. Um, video game orchestra and, uh, I don't know. Um, you can see the full lineup at, <laughs> I'm forgetting, it's like one, was it Bit Brigade? Let me look it up. Um, PAX East. Let's see. Uh, yes, it was Bit Brigade and the, uh, Proto Men as well. Um, yes. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> sorry, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Ugh. So, and this was, um, Prince, Prince had just passed. So I was in my purple shirt, um, to show love. Um, and so yeah, Saturday was cool. Fuse came and talked to me. Some of you might've seen the, like the interview that went up. Uh, so Fuse, and it was the coolest thing happened with that. They had found out about me independent of anybody kind of, I thought that somebody had put a bug in their ear, um, but it turns out that they just had discovered me through, I don't know, just the power of the internet. And we're like, you're dope. We want to interview you. So that was so cool. Um, so this dude came and he had his like camera sound dude with him. And we chopped it up and, and just talked about like video game music and my influences. You can check the whole thing out at my website, samusmusic.com. Um, so that was tight. And then I performed Saturday night. I was the opener. Uh, I was the first artist on and I would say that was another big I don't, I don't know how, what the count was maybe 1500 2000 I don't know it was and it was streamed um but uh it was a fun performance and a fun audience um my boo DJ boyfriend was there again um helping me out to with the track so I didn't have to go be you know <laughs> click clacking on my computer um but it was it was just a fun, fun environment. And like people were really showing me love. And I always love these spaces because they get the references, you know, like, um, there's never any, um, sort of equivocation. I don't have to explain this or explain that, um, which is cool. And, but it's, I'm, again, I'm not trying to like shame people who don't know the fandoms that I'm talking about. Um, but it, it's always fun to like be able to connect on that level. So that's, that's all I'm saying. 
Um, yeah, so pass was super tight. Um, everybody, everybody merked it. All the artists merked it. And then after that, I sold a whole bunch of merch. People just came to the table, showed me love. And, and, uh, it was a beautiful thing. I was really touched and it was really nice. I think to hear from some of the people there, um, who had been coming to PAX for a long time. This one dude, he had his daughter with him, uh, african-american dude and he was talking about how things have changed so much and he's so excited to see me and that his daughter has had an opportunity to meet me and um he's excited for the direction that things are going in and he just thanked me and um, so that was really cool and meaningful so thanks you know pax for giving me that opportunity um i was bummed because we had to leave on sunday um again school related bs um and uh i uh, what was I going to say? I didn't get a chance to hang out at the MAGFest stage, which is where I was the year prior. And like so many cool artists were there. So I was just feeling bad that I didn't have a chance to chop it up with my homies. But, um, you know, hopefully next year, I definitely would like to come back to PAX, even if it's not as like a main stage performer. I think I'm going to make it a, a yearly thing for sure. Um, and my homie David Benjamin was there. He's awesome. He's just the coolest. Um, he brought, he brought me some prints, um, not Prince, print <laughs> to uh, sell um, of like this cool zero suit um, black Samus thing. And we actually sold two of them. So that was really exciting. Um, okay. Uh, keeping the exciting train moving. God, there's just so much. Okay. It's okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can get through this uh, in under like 25 minutes. Um, Let's see, what was I saying? So after that happened, the next exciting thing, like really exciting thing was, oh, I got to go home. I got to go home home. Well, like sort of home. Like home home is like Ivory Coast and Congo. That's where my parents are from. But I guess home is Poughkeepsie, New York. I was born in Rhinebeck, New York, which is very close to, to Poughkeepsie. I went to Poughkeepsie Day School from ages zero to like five-ish until we moved to Paris for a year and then moved to Ithaca, New York. So it's like, you know, where I spent my, my like baby years. Um, and I haven't been back since we left in 1990, whatever, one or two. Um, and so uh, I was invited to perform at Vassar College, which is where my parents worked. And which, so it's so cool. Like my life is going, it's, it's full, it feels full circle. Like being invited to perform at the college where your parents once worked. It's just, life is, is wild. So um, yeah, I uh, hopped in the car on Thursday, took my little butt to, to Vassar and did a set there with this these um two amazing performers. I'll put their information down below. Um, Vagabond was the second one and I met the name of the first performer escapes me. She was a beautiful, um, singer songwriter and I'm going to put her information down. I promise. Um, but yeah, it was just a cool college show. They were, um, interested in, in showcasing, you know, women who were dope performers and, uh, I was, I was the, I was the headliner, which was wild. I don't know. I'm still, trying to own like my I'm still trying to own my status as an artist and so it was like I felt kind of like pressure a little bit um like oh my god I hope everybody doesn't leave and then they'll be like oh she can't pull a crowd she sucks <laughs> she sucks at everything um and, and I mean it sucks I didn't have a chance to stay there long because of school because I had to go back to teach my class the next day um because I had wanted to explore and like see my old house and I drove past the the um, school that I went to but I didn't get to like you know I wanted to just per see where what little Inago might have been like or what I would be uh, maybe I don't know I just wanted to explore my home so <laughs> I didn't get just to do that and I was annoyed um but I'm gonna pl I'm planning on doing that this summer because I do think that it's it's a fascinating thing. I was watching um a an animal documentary with Bay this past weekend about like salmon and how salmon work the Pacific Northwest salmon work their way home and um you know we got all deep and philosophical with it but um there is something to be said about going home and and exploring the place that you you came from. So I really want to have that experience this summer. Um and then okay so very last thing very, very last thing is, um, let me see what happened. Oh yeah. On, so that, that next Friday I opened for Hannibal Burris. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, I have been having the craziest weekends ever. Like, so I, um, let me see. So I, I met Hannibal Burris last year through Open Mike Eagle, um, full circle. This video is going full circle. Um, he shot a music video and um, it was like a, supposed to be, we did like a party scene that turned into a real party. Um, and so I chopped it up a little bit with him and then I, um, uh, what happened? Then I, at South by Southwest this past year, he was there, he did a song with Mike Eagle um, and I was like, he was like, oh, what are you, you know, what are you doing at South by Southwest? What are your plans? And I, was, I told him my showcases or my sets. I was like, you should come, you know, throwing it out there. And then he actually came to one of my sets. Um, so that was so cool. It was the one at Ugly Fest. Um, shout out to Ugly Fest. Um, and uh, so that was really tight. And so he got to see me perform. And I guess it wasn't complete and total shit because um, when I saw he was coming to Cornell to do a show, I messaged him and was like, hey, um, I want to say hi when you're on campus. Like, I'm glad that you're coming to Cornell. And he was like, oh, well, why don't you open for me? Um, it was, I think he made a joke about me hating school and how appropriate that is for me to open at this college show. Um, <laughs> and of course I did my song where I'm like, fuck school, school's trying to ruin my life. Um, so yeah, uh, I did a little, you know, like 15, 15 minute set, um, DJ boyfriend on the ones and twos or on the whatever's turntables. <laughs> and, uh, so that, that was tight. Um, and the crowd gave me more love than that, that young thug debacle. Like, um, they, you know, still, still Cornell's a little bit stiff, man. Cornell's a little bit stiff. I don't know what it is, but like I, every other venue that I perform at, people are just like, yeah. When I perform at Cornell, everyone's kind of like, oh, what do I do? Like, it's okay to show that you care about something and to be engaged with art. It's okay. It's all right. Like, it's not going to negatively affect your GPA. I promise. It's just frustrating. Like, I want, I want more. I want more because I'm giving one million percent. But, I mean, they gave me a little bit more than, Hannah, than a, at, with Young Thug. So, you know, I was grateful. And some of my friends were in the audience. My advisor was in the audience. Um... And then Hannibal Burst killed it, did like a hilarious show, um, hilarious set. So, um, yeah, it, it was an exciting weekend and, and I was happy to see him again. And then, uh, let me see what else happened. Oh, it was really, I mean, I was kind of a little bit annoyed. Never mind. I'm not even, it has nothing to do with that. It has more to do with people, like how they interacted with me when they found out about the Hannibal Burst gig and yeah maybe that's another video for another time but yeah I'll save that because um, we're already you know about to be half an hour half an hour of talking Jesus Christ um so anyways um then I had a show this past Friday um opening for an individual named Obnox um a group called uh, he, it was him and a drummer um but it was really tight Ithaca Underground set it up uh and there were two openers, um, two other openers in addition to me, the uh, Pilgrims, they're amazing. And Quail Tourette, like, actually blew my mind. Like, I'm still trying to recover from that set. So look up Pilgrims, look up Quail Tourette, and look up Obnox. Um, good times. And uh, then I, uh, what happened? Then, you know, life happened, and now I'm here in Austin for OzCon, um, which is this open source convention. My friend, Scott Hanselman, um, he's just, he's, he's, he's unbelievable. <laughs> he's unbelievable. I um, met him through Jamie Brodnax of Black Girl Nerds. We ended up doing a, an interview together on his podcast. We did two interviews, um, this developer's life and then his uh, podcast sort of about how I'm forgetting like the specific name. Um, let me look it up. The Hansel Minutes. Um, Hansel Minutes. Yeah. Hansel Minutes and then this. No, no, no. Hansel Minutes is this developer's life. Scott Hanselman Podcast. Um, Wait, what? What did I do? Yes, okay, I missed, I'm a hot mess. Okay, 
So this developer's life and the Hansel Minutes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we met through there and we've corresponded and, um, you know, since that time. And then when I was in Portland for the double clicks, um, <clears throat> Um, with the double clicks um, going on tour, he was there. He came to the show and we had a great conversation. And he was like, You know, have you considered doing like speaking engagements or going to some conferences and sharing your expertise in that way? And I was like, No, I hadn't really thought about it. And we talked a little bit about that. And then lo and behold, you know, he reaches out to me and talks about his involvement with OSCON and thinks that I would be a great fit, introduces me to the team, and we talked and figured it out. And then I became a keynote for this incredible open source conference. It's just, I'm, I'm still kind of blown away by how this worked out. Scott, you're incredible um, for making things happen. We talked about it this morning. A lot of people talk um, and nothing comes of it, but he you know, actually made this thing happen that we talked about a few, just a few months ago. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of blown away um, and, and will forever be grateful for having so much faith in me. Um, in terms of the set today, it was, I mean, I couldn't have gone better. I was, I think we were all a little bit nervous because it's like a keynote. I'm, I'm a rap, I'm a nerdcore rapper. How are people going to take this? It's 855 in the morning. You know, I'm going to come out there rapping about video games and cartoons and, um, arm cannons and stuff. And it just, we knew that we had to make it extra clear what my role was there, or it would just seem sort of tacked on or kind of random. Uh, um, so we did what we could in terms of like making it engaging. So behind me, music videos for the two songs that I performed, Games and Cartoons and Power Ups were playing. Um, we had a little light display. Um, but what was really key was Scott asked me to share a few words in between the two songs. Um, and so I talked a little bit about the theme was how do we get here and then tomorrow's kind of where are we going. Um, and so I talked about how I got here through my relationship with video games and um, how that allowed me to explore my identity and, and figure out my role in life. And so for people to like really um, not be afraid to engage with all of the things that they've learned along the way where they started because it will ultimately kind of direct them to where they need to and want to be. So um yeah, I received my Twitter exploded after that. I've never had that reaction before. It was like, brrr, like it just, it, it, it's like, you know, when you in Tetris, when you get to the end and then you fuck up and like it just fills up completely. That's what happened with my, that's what it felt like with my Twitter. Like it just, oh, it was over, overwhelmed with the love. So now I'm in the hotel room. Um, I've been grading papers and chilling a little bit. Then I'm going to head to the, um, there's a booth crawl. I'm going to perform one more time tonight. Um, and uh, then I'm going to chill, continue to grade papers. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I will, I think I have more things to share, but this video is already 30 minutes long. So I'm going to chill with that. And uh, I will get it to you. I'm going to try to do these on a weekly basis again. I'm kind of screwing up my schedule because I like to do them on Sundays. But, you know, whatever. We'll do it on Wednesday for now. And then maybe I'll catch up with you the next, next Sunday. Unless something dope happens in between now and then. All right. I've missed you. Goodbye for now. Wait, how do I